Our focus is on the science, and that's what most people see. The data plots, the species diversity lists, the microphotographs. When we get questions, it's about the biology and the techniques. But to make that all happen, it takes loads of effort from a lot of different people. I want to take you on a quick tour of the behind-the-scenes life of a research vessel, and hopefully give you an idea of what it's like doing science on the open seas, or at least from my perspective as an imaging graduate student. This is our boat, the mapping ship PRB Presbytero. It took two days to load up after customs finally cleared our gear. We have a number of ways to measure life at multiple scales and get a complete picture of the area. There's the ROV, the giant underwater robot, a video plankton recorder and underwater video microscope, baited cameras on ropes, bongo nets for small animals, the mock nest system for larger animals, plus we have a handful of blue water divers for fragile critters. There's photo microscopes and chrysals in the lab for snapping pictures, and of course my digital holography setups. The majority of our sampling is done from the fantail area on the back of the boat. It has an A-frame and lots of open space which makes it easy to port our equipment directly into the water. Everything has a launch and recovery sequence that takes cooperation from lots of folks and a well-prescribed set of steps. Like this night launch of the ROV, which is actually just the last 15 minutes of the launch. Of course, we end up getting loads more help when there's something interesting coming back in the ROV desampler takes, like new deep water animals. It's a short trip from the fantail back to the main lab, our stronghold, where all the sample analysis occurs. It's a complete zoo after the ROV returns or nets get pulled up. All the scientists cluster around to observe and document the animals. It's varied at other times depending on who is interested in which sampling methods. Hey there, welcome to my dark room. This is where we've been spending the last two weeks or so collecting holograms of all these interesting critters. It's a little small, but you know, it works. It's comfortable. It's uh, just big enough for what we need, and it keeps us in our own little private space away from everything else. It's getting, you know, it's gotten a little bit lonely back here, and it certainly gets warm during the days. But you know what? It's my own place. So, this is my lab. Let's go take a look at some of the rest of the ship. The ROV control room is located just outside the main lab. There's almost always a crowd gathered at the door, looking in at the monitors as they fly the robot. Inside, Joe, Russ, and Gwen man the controls. The ROV has the ability to grab animals right out of the water. The mess hall is one of the social centers of our life. It's the only large room where we can spread out and have some space for eating, working, playing games, or watching the ROV operations on another monitor. Up one steep flight of stairs is our other workspace, the post-proc lab. And uh, once again, post-processing with Cabell hard at work. And everyone else hanging out in post-proc, our big camera crew, hey what? guys, making a film for the family. These guys have been taking care of us, making us look pretty ever since day one. <laughs> Up one more steep flight of stairs is the main bridge. Behind the bridge, the Navy SEALs, who protect us from pirates and keep us safe, sleep and relax at night. And in the front cabin, there's the bridge, which steers us in mostly the right direction most of the time. Down below are the officers' cabins, which are palatial compared to us in the crew cabins packing six deep. Beneath the crew bunks is the cargo hold area where the extra equipment and packing boxes are stored. Next to that is the never popular exercise room. This is our exercise room. This is how we keep in shape while we're here on the boat. Well, plus running laps around the deck. The exercise room is, like many other things on the boat, quaintly out of order. Yeah. 
Of course, all this good science we're doing has another vital key. Having just the right dance moves. With 27 scientists and a total of 61 people on board, it's important to keep a sense of humor in our crowded quarters. That's why we brought along Eric, Russ, Emery, Cavill, Bill, Archie, Gwyn, and all the other crazy pranksters. And thanks to our ties with the local Philippine scientists, we were even able to take in some of the cultures as we passed by, like dancers who came out from the island of Tawi Tawi as we passed by on our way to the southern sampling areas. It turns out dancers weren't the end of our surprises. When we got back to shore, we even had a local band and a whoop de doo ceremony with the American ambassador. Whoa. Despite the rolling waves our first day out of port, my biggest problem wasn't seasickness. That's right, it was the height of the ceilings. This is what it looks like going from the mess hall back to our main lab from my perspective. Needless to say, the ceilings won. I had a great time on the old Presby. We'll certainly miss all my new friends until the next time we meet again.